Yeah. And all around. So, for those of you who've been following along with the YouTube channel, you'll be familiar with some of the stuff we've got here already. But we'll start over here with uh, the vanilla. Oh yes. So we I had, forgot uh, about that vanilla. I got thing. some vanilla cuttings, which um, started off as just these here that you can see the darker green was the cuttings that we received. Now vanilla is an orchid. It's the world's only edible orchid. I didn't know that vanilla is an orchid. Yep, it's an orchid. Oh, and, that's okay. uh, so you can see in the in the leaves if you compare this to the to the orchids. Yeah. Um, the leaves oh, are very yeah. similar. So kind They're of also thick. viney, no? Yeah, so this is a vining orchid, yeah, and they'll grow up to 90 feet. Um, they grow quite quickly. So these cuttings have only been here for a month or so, and they've already grown this much. Wow. Now, you know, they... they so you can they tell it's really going to grow... Yeah, it's like, going to grow tall. And mm. they need to grow for about two years before they'll start flowering. Now, when they flower, um, the flowers will only last for 24 hours. But they will flower continuously for a couple of weeks. So you'll get flower, it'll last 24 hours, and then there'll be another flower and another flower. So and what are you going to do? What, what can, what can you use to flower? To, pros, uh, to, to make them flower? Yeah. Nothing. you just got to wait for the conditions to be right and for it to be big enough. No cross-pollination. No, no, you have to cross-pollinate then to get the vanilla pods. Okay. So the, so the flowers will come out and they'll die off. And then the, the vanilla pod is actually the seed pod, right? So in the wild... You would have um, a pollinator, a bee or a fly or something, is going to cross-pollinate the flowers. And when the flower dies, what's left is the seed pod, which has been fertilized by the cross-pollination. And that seed pod over about a three to four month period will grow into what we know as a vanilla pod. Inside of that vanilla pod is the, is the seeds. Okay? Yeah. So you can then harvest those pods. It's like a peanut. It looks a little bit like a peanut, but smaller. Okay. Yeah? So you can harvest those pods and then uh, dry them. Mm. Um, now, if you want to get vanilla essence, you put those pods into vodka mm. and you leave it for a few months. And um, the uh, alcohol will extract the vanilla oil. Mm -hmm. and then you can filter it mm -hmm. and uh, the alcohol will evaporate off. And what you're left with then is the vanilla the essence, essence which you can use for cooking. Whoa. And if you want the vanilla pods, then you can just dry them and you can use those. You can put them into um, a jar of sugar. So you'll have like a vanilla flavored sugar. Oh, nice. Um, but this is going to take a while to grow. But you can see they're quite healthy. We've got yeah. roots growing into there already. Right, right. So as, as far as an orchid goes, they've been pretty easy to take care of. Um, they're, so they're in kind of an, an orchid mix. Um, there's a little bit more soil in there than what you would normally have possibly with an orchid. But they don't seem to be that bothered. What they do like is very high humidity. So I've actually put cuttings in three different parts of the garden. This one, I think, is the one that's doing the best. We'll see the others as we go around. So you can see how the difference between the different environments, yes. the different parts of the garden have got different levels of humidity and sunlight right. affect the same species of plant. Uh, so planted down here then, this is a sensation. This is a baby, but it will grow into a giant. So this is a, a giant sensation. We do have one giant one yeah. already at the front <laughs> and another at the giant. back. Yeah. But this is how they start off. We've also got a variegated sensation now also, which I'll show you later. Uh, we've got Red Congo here. Um, these used to be expensive, but they've come down in price. In fact, a lot of plants have come down in price. That's something else that I'll show you as we go around is some of the uh, plants that used to be really expensive, but now have come down in price a lot. Here we've got a Plamanii Blackface. So uh, Black we've face. got this one we bought in BGC in mm -hmm. Bonifacio Global City. They have a little plant market there at the end of the high street. We bought this one there and you can see now it's starting to give a new leaf. So this has probably been here for, it's gotta be three to four months now. And I was worried that it was going to die off, but I think it was just establishing itself, maybe acclimatizing to the environment here. Also lately it's been more sunny. Mm -hmm. So this area is quite a shady part of the garden. So probably the extra sun in recent days has, has kick-started it and it's, it's producing a new leaf now. So what else have we got here then? So next to that here, we've got a Anthurium species. This is called an Anthurium moodianum. Oh, I haven't um, seen that before, darling. So it comes out with this very dark leaf color and they will harden off to this. And you can see this one's got some spots on it. Now I'm not sure if this is 
uh, a kind of fungal thing that's going on. Uh, and the other leaf that came out also has it, wasn't so happy. Well, maybe you should, uh... Now, it did produce two leaves at the same time, which I thought was quite rare for an anthurium. I haven't seen any of my others do that. So it could possibly be that there's two plants down there. Um, now, these were the first leaves that opened up since it was planted here. So it could be that this is just part of the kind of acclimatization and getting used to its new space. So we'll see how the next leaf that comes out is. And if... This is a kind of fungal infection. You can see whatever it is, Maybe it isn't spread to anything neem else. Oil so. on it? Yeah, um, so we spray neem oil on the plants. Uh, that helps to keep away bugs. It also helps with fungus. Helps with fly control in the garden. So neem oil. Neem um, oil, yeah. Guys, you, you neem need to oil. spray it in the evenings because it gets deactivated by UV light. Yeah. So neem oil should be sprayed. At neem nighttime. oil should be sprayed in the evenings. Yeah. Um, if you do it during the daytime and it gets hit by the sun, it will be, it will be kind of deactivated. The, um, the chemicals that are in it will break down very quickly with UV so light. So it will become useless, yep. basically. And can you also talk about your ground cover? Because they're beautiful. The so under here, uh, yeah, so we've got different types of calatheas, also called prayer plants, because they, they close up their leaves at night time. At night time, yeah. Um, so we've got different types of calatheas here. I'm not sure on the names of them all, but uh, they can be quite awkward to grow so they do not like a lot of light um, now this one here you can see the tip of the leaf this this is a sign of too much water all right uh, when uh, when they start doing this basically the leaves go kind of mushy at the end so what happens is, is that they're sucking up too much water and the the actual cells of the Break plant down. well they, they they explode because yeah, they're yeah, full yeah. of water so yeah, yeah. that's where then you see this um, so so why do you have the ground cover can you tell them because of it makes it like um well one it helps to keep well it keeps the weeds down mm. yeah so having ground cover helps keep the weeds down and it also as well just makes it look more natural mm -hmm. so you know if you were what i'm trying to do here is create a kind of natural environment or natural habitat, habitat. for the plants oh sorry and when i look out at the garden i want to see what you know you would kind of see in nature and mm. really in nature you're not going to see bare soil bare ground cover exactly you know it's going to be covered with weeds or other things. Now we do have something else growing as ground cover under here. Now these are kind of fussy outside. Uh, so these are called Fetonias or Nerf oh, plants. Yeah. So these are usually grown as an indoor plant, but you know, I mean, obviously the species comes from the wild and, and in the wild they grow outdoors, but you've just got to have the right conditions. So not too much sun, not too much water. So I planted these around in places and that's one of the things I do with the garden is just kind of experiment. Guys, it's one of the things like that I thought so funny about Nick because every time um, he sees like an open ground, like <laughs> he's going to be like, oh my God, I can see soil. I need to go to the garden shop and buy more and stuff buy something, yeah. because, and cover it up. <laughs> because some things that you plant now will, will die off because the environment will. There is uh, another Fetonia growing down here. So this one is same same species yeah you a nerve plant but it's not got the red color to it this is the white oh, one. sorry 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 sorry, yeah. sorry about that so that's down there um okay so what else do we have so if you look here? these are if called wanchai um wanchai uh so these these are quite nice for filling in some space as well yeah uh these here are another type of calathea so oh, can you believe that? It is, thought, I, I, I always thought that it's like a, a, banana. a banana thing, a banana yeah, no, family. Are, it seems like a banana leaf. Yeah. And this is a species of Calathea. So guys, that actually is the same species same as... Same species as these. Yeah. As the prayer plants. Yeah. So you'll notice these also as well will kind of close a little bit at night time. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, so these uh, are a little bit sunburnt here. Um, this is a philodendron. I think this is a red anderson. Um, Red Anderson. Well, I like that. It's rotating name. its leaves towards this way because our sun travels that way around, you know, so this side is the house, so it's in shade. So you can see all of the leaves have been orientating towards the sun. Yeah. Because um, it wants to get more energy. That's also why probably the leaves are, are a little bit um, smaller, even though it's grown quite tall. And also, you can see the, the petioles are quite long. Yes. So when you get your plant growing with these long petioles, it's called leggy. Leggy. So when it starts doing that, it's doing one of two things. Either it's looking for something to climb on, mm. which isn't the case. Or looking here, for the sun. Climbing, or it's looking for the sun. Yeah. So they stretch out to try and find the sun to get energy for the plant. 
once they find a spot where they're getting more sun, that's where then they'll begin to upsize. So if you want to get your philodendrons growing bigger, mm. they need the right combination Condition, of yeah. conditions. Yeah. So you've got to imagine in the wild, these would start on the forest floor yeah. as a seed or somewhere up in a branch of a tree. And they start off small. And as they grow up the tree, they're going to get more sun. Yeah. So uh, that's why the leaves also then get bigger. Yeah. So the bigger the leaves, the more sun they can handle because in the wild, when they're up high in the tree canopy, they're getting more sun. Um, so you, this here is our Paradiso Verde. Now this was it's a cutting. so big. Yeah, so this is big because we cut it from the wall at the back. Yeah. Now you'll see when we go to the back wall, the very top of the wall is where this cutting was taken from. And that's also the sunniest part. So it's kind of like, as I said, in the wild, it will have grown, it's got up, it's got a lot of sun, it starts making lots of big leaves and gets more bushy up there. And then that's how you get them to upsize. You can see the same thing actually happening here with this pothos on the wall. Mm. So starts off on the ground, we've got small leaves. And as it gets higher, you see it gets more bushy and then the leaves start upsizing. So that's, that's how the pothos has grown here and that's how the philodendrons would also grow in the wild. Um, the next philodendron we got here is a Soderoi Aff, it's a Soderoi Affinus. This is a crawling Soderoi, where the true Soderoi is a climber. So one of the ways you can tell is when the uh, petiole opens, this little spot here will be pink. And you don't get that pink color on the Soderoi. The true Soderoi, which we have one here, if you look at the petiole there, there's no color to it. Oh, so that's how you can recognize the difference. Well, one is this one climbs and that mm. one crawls. Yeah. And the other is this one doesn't have that pink color on the petiole when it opens up. All right. But other than that, the leaves are very similar. Um, although uh, this, these, these leaves are a little older, so they've lost some of their silver thing to them and they get a bit more sun. But this one here is a slightly more shade. So you can see it has this silver kind of um, variegation to it. Next to it here, we have just newly opened leaf. Um, so this is a philodendron fuzzy petiole, or otherwise called a nangaratensi. I have no idea. Um, so <laughs> the old leaf was, was burnt. Um, so I recently, uh, the bamboos we've got growing here, I untied mm. them and let them hang over to provide a bit more shade. So hopefully they won't get as burnt. Um, so you see it's called fuzzy petiole, if you look at the petiole here. Right. It's got this fuzzy texture to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as it matures, the red petiole will turn to green, but it keeps that fuzziness to it. Whoa, beautiful. Growing next to it here, we've got a philodendron ah, silver sword. I thought it was still the vanilla. <laughs> nope, this is a philodendron silver sword. So what you can see with this is the maturation of the plant. So again, they started off with small leaves at the bottom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as it's got bigger, the leaves have got bigger, and then the leaves have changed shape. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. I did notice. So that as before. the leaves mature, they will take on what's called their mature form. Oh, that's a beautiful shape, though, and it has a silvery thing on yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, you, you see the same thing Sparkly. with the with the um, biete, yeah, and with the um, um, this one and the uh, atabapensi. So they they start off with a juvenile leaf. So they don't have these bunny ears. Mm. And then as they begin to mature, they get those bunny ears. Uh, this is another Plamania. This is not a black face. This is just a regular Plamania. New leaf just beginning to unfurl there. Uh, behind here, we have an Anthurium cardboard. Cardboard. Yeah, so it's called that because the leaves are quite stiff. So oh, yeah, like a cardboard. They're like a cardboard. Wait, sorry. Um, so when, when they first come out, they are still soft. Yeah, like most anthuriums, the leaves are very delicate when they first open, very easy to damage. But this one hardens off to be like cardboard. And then they're also quite easy to damage because they'll snap. Yeah. Unlike other anthuriums like this here, um, where they are more flexible in the leaves. Uh, so this here is just a bunch of different aglanaminas, which I'm using again for ground cover, to just fill in the gaps. Uh -huh. um, so... You know, when you plant, you've got to think that a lot of these species are going to grow quite big. Yes. But when you Precisely. first plant them, um, you don't really know what free space you're going to have. Because as they're smaller and they're closer to the ground, 
they're covering the ground already with their with their leaves as they grow bigger or the climbers especially as they go up what you're left then with is is bare ground at the bottom so that's where then you can come back in and fill in with other plants to make your garden look more lush um, you can see the difference between this area here where I've done that and this area here where it hasn't been done yet you know you've got a lot of bare ground still showing there uh, so it does look nicer and more lush when you have that um, and the great thing about the Aglan Aminas is they're not too fussy I found um, with light and water and they're not too expensive um, what, uh, okay this one is an interesting one here this is a Burley Marks Fantasy um, so there's a disagreement in the horticultural world whether this is a species or a cultivar so a species is a naturally occurring plant. A cultivar is one that has been manually cross-pollinated between two different plants oh, to yeah. produce. Yeah. So um, with begonias, a lot of the fancy colored begonias you get, they are cultivars. Um, a pink princess is a cultivar. Yeah? So a mean, philodendron pink princess. You made it. It's been made. made. Not, yeah. not necessarily in a lab, but you've taken two different plants of the same species yeah, so philodendrons or two anthuriums, and you cross pollinate them. Sure. So, uh, an example would be um, the glorious and the gloriosum. Yeah, so the gloriosum is uh, a species. The philodendron gloriosum, we have one here. So, this is a crawling, um, a crawling philodendron. Now, the glorious is a crossbreed of this, and I think a melanocrysum which is a climber. So then you get the kind of gloriosum type leaf. It's a little bit darker like a melanocrysum, but it also climbs. Um, this here is an interesting philodendron, different to the others. So it's multiple leaves. I so like here, that one actually. Yeah, I forgot its I, name. Um, we um, got that from BGC this too. This is also from BGC, yeah. Uh, Goel Goeldii, I think, philodendron. Goeldii. Goeldii, yeah. Goeldii. So this is the latest leaf just come out. So it's, uh, it's kind of unique as far as philodendrons go. It, it's, not, uh, it's not kind of your typical heart-shaped leaf yeah. or the bunny-shaped ears. Right. Philodendron. This is uh, Philodendron Brazilians. You cannot believe it's Philodendron. I always thought it's just a pothos. No, that's, that's a Philodendron. Oh, apparently, guys, that's a Philodendron. Yeah, philodendron Brazilians. Mm -hmm. And it climbs just like this. This is also a Philodendron, Compost Potanum. This is another one where the juvenile leaves don't have that's these. From my, that's from my CCLA. Yeah. She gave it to us as a gift. So when it's juvenile, I think all the juvenile leaves have almost died off. Um, it doesn't have the, the, the three e lobes. The ear. It's not a trilobe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, these are, these are trilobed rather than ears that point up. It's not the bunny ears. Um, but it doesn't have those when it's juvenile. Crown glory of your garden? Uh, yeah. The, ah, um, although you have couple now. Well, hmm. yeah, we've got a few kind of rare plants. Um, or were rare and becoming less rare as more collectors get them. So uh, just before we go on to those, here's our other vanilla. So you can see this was planted at the same time as the other one and it's grown a lot less. So yeah. it's still growing and this one here has not, has not made a shoot at all, but it has produced uh, a new root that's come out of here. <laughs> so I'm waiting for this one still to shoot. This one has already grown, but you can see it's a different part of the garden. It's got different conditions and it's not growing as well as the one that we saw over there. So guys, just to give you a background to those who haven't watched our past videos, this used to be really tiny. It came from where, babe? Came from Okay, Peru. so this is the uh, Spiritus Sancti, and this is native to Brazil. There's only three or four known left in the wild. It comes from an area of Brazil called um, Espiritu is the province name. Yeah. And so that's why it's called the Espiritus Sancti. Sancti. Um, so I brought this, it was imported from Thailand. It was a seedling. So it was this only from... this high when we got yeah. it with some very small leaves. And uh, uh, they're not here anymore, but the juvenile leaves of this had really no tiny. bunny ears. Well, you can see as it's grown, it started to develop the ears. So again, that's the maturation of the, of the plant you can see going on there. So this um, grows into quite long, strappy leaves. Um, quite a beautiful shape to them. It's starting to get its mature form shape, but it's not yet. When they first open, the underside is a slightly burgundy 
reddish color, but when it matures, that disappears and you're left with this veining. Whereas on the Ataba Pensi, which looks very similar, that coloration remains. Um, so this was the latest leaf that opened up, got a little bit damaged. That's one of the things I grow my plants outside, but that also means they're susceptible to damage. You're not gonna, you know, you can't expect to get perfect leaves like you would on an indoor plant. Um, but you can see now it's growing out quite a large aerial root here. We've got some ants fighting there, look at that. <laughs> Guys, look at the ants. They're fighting. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, it's grown this a large aerial root here. And this is growing on an old piece of, of fern tree. Um, so I, I think that the next leaf that comes out is gonna get bigger. So this is part again of the maturation process. It won't begin to put out larger leaves until it feels secure in its environment. And one way it feels secure is knowing that it is attached to something that can support the weight of the leaves. Um, it can anchor itself. Yeah. So I'm expecting the next leaf would be way bigger to be larger and more mature than this because you can see it's put out this this type of root and it should now feel securely attached there. Uh, so next to it here we have oh, this is a tree or well, it will be a tree. It can grow up to nine meters tall. So this it's is a very new, rare, very rare. This is a new species that was discovered only a few oh, sorry. years ago sorry, sorry, sorry. in Papua New Guinea. It's very hard to pronounce. It's called a Sisgium joehii. Can, 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 you, can you push it a little closer to the camera, yeah. darling, so we can see the very... The so very the leaves costly. look very similar to the Anthurium vichii with this ribbing to it. Um, so this is a fruiting tree, actually. Um, once it matures, you will get fruits and they grow on the actual stem so mm -hmm. you'll you'll get groups of berries just uh, growing on okay. the bark you like a fig tree like a fig tree yes yes so they start off almost looking like a mushroom kind of growing wow. on the, the bark nice. and they'll, they'll mature can into a berry it? you can eat them apparently they are quite bitter so they're not really that tasty but you can eat them um so this they've got a full size one of these in arid narrows yes. in cavite yeah uh, if you saw our video there, they talked about it there. So that was donated to them by the Papua New Guinea government, government. Yes. Because there weren't so many of these left in the wild. So that's quite common with um, botanical gardens. Uh, they will get donated or they share the species so if that they if it dies you. off in the wild. Now the thing is, if they trust if they you yeah. enough. Um, so if it dies off in the wild, there's a species which is in conservation in a greenhouse somewhere so they can reintroduce it back to the <laughs> yeah. So it's in a clear pot. So the clear pots are good because it gives you an opportunity to see the root growth without having to disturb it. So once we see the roots um, coming out here, we know then that it's established and we can transfer it to the ground. So the, um, the plant prices have come down a lot. There was a very high demand for plants during COVID and a lot yeah, of plants like, were doing their gardening. Like, uh, but I think, but I think the, Spiritus Sancti is still expensive. Spiritus Sancti is still expensive, but now it's yeah. in tissue culture. So um, they've come down in price, but still around 25K for the seedling type. Yeah, but how much did you pay for yours? 75, 80, I think. 87. So. For a very tiny one. Um, tiny, tiny one. So the prices are coming down, which is good for collectors like me, because now I can get things that I wanted a lot cheaper than what they were. Um, and even that Sisium joe joehii was, they were doing cuttings, okay, for a mature tree, they were doing cuttings at arid narrowids and they were over a million pesos. Yeah, that one, Whereas guys. This was this one, 17K um, at this, at this like, size. We really yeah. love this tree, right? But of course we cannot afford it because it's like, the cheapest probably is like around 700,000 to a million. It's like, no, yeah, that's too stupid. But it's the same also with the Spirit of Sancti. To get yeah. it already mature, there but is, sorry, I shouldn't plus. say it's stupid, right? It's not stupid. It's just like, how do I say, insane? Yeah, it's insane that you can that that, that you, you can pay a million for a plant. And here, then. Uh, going along here, this is a, another type of philodendron species. Looks similar to the spirit of sanctity. This one's got a bit burnt because you get a lot of sun here. Um, but the other leaf back there. So this has kind of a ribbing to it also, and it's not mature yet. But once this matures, it will get leaves that are kind of this size. Uh, very similar to this here. So back there, this is the Philodendron Patriciae. 
Whoa, I like that. That's someone that I thought... Um, thought was a Vichy. Yes, yeah, yes. So it's a philodendron. It looks like the Vichy. Um, so this is a cutting from a mature species. Um, but it's got a small shoot coming out. I think that's going to come out small. So it's going to, you know, revert to a small size. But it's we'll just okay. have to wait for it to grow again. It's all right. Um, but this one, though, oh my God, this is my most favorite. Can you put year? your hand in it? Yeah, so this is the philodendron SP Columbia. I really love that plant. Uh, so SP means species. Yeah. So it hasn't been really given, given a name yet. It's a species from Colombia. Yeah. SP Columbia. Um, so yeah, the, this, um, where you can see the progress of the leaves as they started off down here. They're small. And uh, this is a crawler again. So you can see it has what's called a rhizome growing along the ground here. So this will crawl along the ground and it will just keep on making making shoots as it crawls along. And then once it crawls out too far, I'm going to have to cut it and put it back again. So just like a gloriosum, it will crawl. Uh, down here, we've also got a bunch of anthuriums sheltering here. Under the, <laughs> the ground covers. Yeah. Uh, this is, it looks similar to the SP Columbia, but it's not. This is a Dean McDowell, which is a crossbreed of a Gloriosum and a Pastazanum, I think. And I have a Pastazanum hiding away at the back there also. Um, got a, a Golden Dragon juvenile growing back. So there's a lot there. of, guys, there's a lot of species underneath there. Uh, this here is uh, quite a cool one. So it's called an El Choco Red. So it looks uh, similar when it opens up to a Philodendron Varicosum. So it comes out with this very red, red colored leaf. Um, so I thought originally it, maybe it was called El Choco Red because it's almost like a chocolate color. You see the underside of the leaf keeps that coloration. Thank afterwards. you, Bear. Um, but uh, it's not. It's because it's from the El Choco region of Colombia. Colombia. So most of these uh, philodendron species are, are from, from South, South America. America they're, they're, yeah. They don't have them in Africa, native. To what Africa. about in Asia? In Asia, they're also not native here, but they've been introduced to the wild by accident. <laughs> so there are some, you know, philodendron species now. Down here, I just got this yesterday. This is a new Anthurium. So this is an Anthurium clarinivernum. So, <clears throat> my goodness, hard to see, how could he memorize? Basically, if you that? if you look at the look at the uh, the lobes here, you see how they overlap like that. See, I didn't even notice that they overlap. It overlaps. Darling. Well, if you look at this uh, anthurium here, so the Magnificum. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah, it's just a heart shape. Like they're separated. But this one here, the the lobes they overlap. overlap. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's now one of the can, ways you can, can see the see. difference. Um, yes. So this will grow a similar kind of size to this. This one can get much bigger, the Magnificum. This is a relatively smaller type but of But it's Renthurium. interesting, yeah? It's um, interesting. This here is a Mamiae, Philodendron Mamiae, Silver Cloud, um, native from Ecuador, I believe. This is another type of Anthurium here. Mm -hmm. So this one also is, is almost like the cardboard. Mm -hmm. The leaves are quite uh, rigid and they'll, they'll yeah. snap. Yeah. So this is called uh, an anthurium reflex. Ba guys, ba hmm? <laughs> it, it's like pichai. Looks like pichai. Yeah. yeah, the one we put in the sinigang. Yeah. Then we have a begonia growing next to it. So I got a few begonias scattered around uh, wherever they survive. Um, back there we have an anthurium which will grow huge. Um, it's called an anthurium. Oh yeah. Signi. I do like that. It hasn't, oh. it hasn't really got big yet, but oh sorry, I, I, really don't, reach I, it. I don't want to step this on one it. here. <laughs> so that will grow into a quite big. Oh yeah, I like that one. Actually, very big that um, one anthurium. And here's another anthurium here, the Dracina paternum. Yeah, it, it looks like a, a dragon. Like a like a devil's head or something. With these horns. So it has a new shoot coming out. So also we've got an anthurium radicans here, but we've got a very big radicans around the corner. Yeah, there's really a, like a lot of species underneath in those areas because he just like put whatever so i told here, you if he can see a, a ground he'll he'll uh, be this crazy is growing, uh the, this is a colocasia i think this one's native to the philippines oh actually. i love that that, that is so one the of black my magic favorite plants colocasia this is yeah. an Am uh, amazonia um and they can grow in the water in the water uh, uh, they can grow in the ground but you can also grow them as an aquatic plant as well so i put them the in acacias will upsize 
uh, and can handle a bit more sun actually. And the it's more sun you get, magic. the darker it will be. <laughs> I call. Yeah, call but it's not magic. really the name. But it's like um. Well, it is. Uh, yeah, allocation black magic. That's what, that's what it's called. Well, co colocasia, I think it is actually. Uh, the difference between the allocation and the colocasia is to do with where the petiole connects. So on the allocasia, I think it connects at the top of the lobe here, whereas in the colocasia, it's it's part way down. All right. I, I think that's the. The difference, the difference between the two. Well, I could never tell. Uh, we've got more, more here, which is the uh, oh, that's velvet. black velvet. Black velvet. We've got lots of stuff growing up on this wall, but uh, we've also got our vitae here. So, the wall up until a couple of weeks ago was kind of bare concrete with the plants on it, and uh, they he they worked so hard so, to replace so well the background. Um, well, the concrete wall gets a lot of sun. Yeah. But behind it, so the sun travels that way and the wall gets warm, so it was heating up, you know, the plants. And so I put this black felt here, which soaks up the water when we water it. So it when the concrete wall heats up, it evaporates and it increases the humidity. Now with the increased humidity <coughs> of the plants, they, they like it a lot more, so the leaves will be less crispy. And it also absorbs the water and so it stays yeah. a little wet all the time yeah so uh, this um regali i love that was sweetheart. not so happy but just over a couple of weeks since we put that in it's already got now a new growth shoot um so we've got quite a lot of stuff growing on here a big big bsa oh yeah so it'll actually flower if it gets enough sun but these will climb so i got a few of these i got another one over there so three or four of them Babe, can we've you got talk about my favorite one the queen queen, the, queen, queen i can i can only queen, say yeah. queen Okay, Sorry. so this is a Anthurium wadaquinum, or known as the Queen Anthurium. It doesn't like a lot of sun, so that's why it's back there. And if it starts getting too much sun, the leaf will begin to get a lighter color, a lighter green. So with a lot of the dark leaf plants, the less light they get, the darker they will be. So if you like your Anthuriums, like the Regali and so on, to have this darker color, yeah, they need a little them. less sun. So you can see what happens <clears throat> when they get too much sun. So this is a Vichii. And up until a couple of weeks ago, this was high up on the wall and was getting hit by too much sun. You can see it lost its dark green color and it got bleached. Moved it, the new leaf coming out, new anthurium leaves are very delicate and it got damaged. So that's why it's like this. But uh, you can see it would have been much bigger than the last one. So the next one that comes out, I'm hoping will be, will be quite big. Now these, these can get, you know, this long. Yeah, I'm excited um, for that. Like I've seen it. I, yeah, I've seen like yeah, things. yeah. I've seen it in in its mature form, and it's really beautiful. Very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, here we got a Philodendron glorious. Uh, it got a little bit damaged also during the work on the wall. Um, so this is the climbing type of Philodendron, uh, rather than the crawling gloriosum. The Monstera oblique. Mm. which you can tell because oh, yeah, it's it almost is. got no leaf. <laughs> um, so if you compare this to other Monsteras, so so we've got we've got the Deliciosa, which is growing there, the really large one. Yeah. So the kind of thing about Monsteras is they have what they call fenestration. So the fenestration is these holes in the leaves. Now, why do they why do they develop this? It's, it's to allow light sunlight light. through. Yeah. So as uh, as they grow, the leaves will allow the sunlight through to the leaves below it. Yeah. So that's that's how nice. how they develop this. So this um, oblique um, has very large holes. A lot of people compare this to the Adansonia. Now the Adansonia looks very similar, but the holes are much smaller. So this is a true form um, oblique. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but you can see the difference between that type of monstera and and this one. You see the holes are very different. The shape oh, yeah. of the leaf, yeah, yeah, the right, size right, of the holes. Right, right. So there's much more leaf on this compared yes. to the oblique. <laughs> and then if you look down here, this is, so this is the Adansonia. I saw That's another type. Another type. But you can see it has a lot more leaf than the um, oblique does. A variegated banana. So this is a banana. This yeah, that's also from my from Frenny. So this was bordered Aranaro. It's oh, variegated for that. Beauty. That's my favorite. So the mature non-variegated Florida Beauty, we have one over here. Sorry. So the leaves sorry, will get sorry. this size. I need to be better at this uh, filmography. Um, so this is just a plain Florida beauty. And it's the variegated one over there. So eventually the variegated one will get will get to this size. 
And again, you can see the maturation of the leaves from small to big as it's climbed up. And it's got its aerial roots anchored in there. And then oh, back here, we've got a large, this almost died. This, yeah, this, this, and we, uh, moved we had it, it there. planted when we first moved in. I didn't know, know so much about plants. I was putting them where I thought they looked good, <laughs> and where they looked good wasn't <laughs> always where they wanted to be. So this almost died. I mean, it kind of dropped all its leaves. It wilted. They turned yellow. I relocated it here, and just out of luck, it really likes this spot and has grown. So this <laughs> is uh, Philodendron gigantum. Um. So we up here we have more uh guys i also love this fern it's called boston this one, here? This one darling oh this is uh, variegated boston, boston fern. ferns yeah and there's another species of monstera yeah. growing here um <laughs> another species. so this one uh this is a monstera that doesn't get really giant which is funny because the word monstera actually means mon monster or giant leaves but this is a monstera peru it doesn't get giant leaves even as it grows up see this is kind of the size they get uh they don't get fenestrations this one here is a monstera and it looks similar to the Peru, but it will grow bigger and it will get fenestrations as it matures. Uh, these are air plants just growing up here. So Guys, I really love the Spanish air plants. The Spanish moss yeah. is its uh, yeah. kind of common name. <laughs> it's like a curtain. Yep. So these just keep on growing and, and to propagate these very easy, you just pull off the bottom like that. Yeah. And just hang this into a tree and uh, it'll just grow there yeah that's that's what what's been happening here so it's i think it's technical latin name is tillandisia or something along those lines you got another type of fern down here there's a maidenhair fern so we have a couple of ferns here lots of different types of ferns i'm not sure the names there. of a lot of these that's a rabbit foot fern there we have a rabbit foot here this one's called a rabbit foot fern because the it looks like a rabbit. The end of the stem where it grows from, you can see it down there, looks like a rabbit's foot. <laughs> okay. So that's why it's called a rabbit's foot fern. Uh, vanilla here. So this one's growing also well. I think they just want light. Uh, <clears throat> light and the humidity. So this one's doing well. Uh, we have another clean anthurium here which died back and I just left it in the pot and you can see now it's got two new growth points so um, don't throw away your plants you know if you have a space in the garden just leave it and if the environment's right for it you know the even the plant that looks like it's died back I mean it's got no leaves it's got nothing but it's got these two new growth points coming from it uh, and then up up in the tree here we got orchids which Ellie picked up in Manila last week um, so we're going to fill up this tree with lots of orchids okay uh, down the side here then this area of the garden gets a lot less light yeah um, so you can see this alocasia here has grown quite kind of leggy and doesn't get huge leaves I mean these can get really big you'll see these just growing in the wild in the Philippines all around Type of taro, I think, believe you can eat the roots, right? Um, but uh, this area of the house really I likes like the, the anthuriums. Um, so this is oh, you also the have, radicans. Is that a black, uh, a red congo there? Uh, there's a red congo growing down there, yeah. Uh, and then we've got a cutting from the Mexicanum here. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm not sure its name actually. We got it the other week at. Um, um casanova's garden center i'm not sure what it is guys you can comment if you know the name uh this here another type of uh anthurium is this the radicans and you can see this leaf is getting quite large so when it comes out it comes out with with this coloration and as it hardens off it goes to a darker green so uh that's a uh, anthurium radicans now they're talking about difference in species and cultivars so this is a species and then the Anthurium luxuriens is a cultivar, and it's a cross between the Anthurium radicans, which gives the luxuriens its texture, and a uh, Magnificum, I think, to give it its shape. So the shape is the kind of heart-shaped... It's, it's quite amazing that you can do that to the um, plants too, right? I thought you can only do that to dogs. No, no, as long as they're within the same um, breed, you know, Anthuriums cross with Anthuriums. 
Um, so this one here has just put out its 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 basically sex organs. Um, so does it mean that he's a male? Uh, no, you, 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 uh, the male and female actually will look the same. All they right. always come out like this. So this actually is uh, it's called a spadex, and it's a modified leaf. It's not a flower. All right. So actually, when you say the anthurium is flowering, it's not really a flower. Actually, it's a leaf. Oh, that's another tip. Um, so it comes out, you can see, basically, this is the leaf. And this leaf encases the spadex. And the spadex here, in the um, female, will mm -hmm. have the seeds, and in the male will have the pollen. So when it's ready, uh, it will open up, it will peel back this leaf, and it will put out a scent which will attract pollinators. Yes. And they will either take the pollen and deposit it on hopefully another one if there was another one growing. So if this anthurium was growing and flowering at the same time, oh. you could end up with a new cultivar. Species? Yeah. Because it could cross-pollinate. Sorry, not species. But then cultivar. you would have to, you know, collect the seeds and germinate the seeds or hope that it germinates naturally. Um, so that's basically the, the kind of cross-pollination process of the anthuriums. Um, this anthurium, I'm not sure the name of, but uh, I quite liked it. So. It just looked like regali to me. Uh, no, no, it's a completely different shape. Well, apparently not. The regali. The regali is much more kind of rounded, heart shape than that. Um, there's more anthuriums here. So I got lots of anthuriums growing along here because they just like this environment. This area of the house is very humid, uh, partly because the aircon compressors behind there put out warm air, so it gets very humid here. And doesn't get too much sun. So as I said, the anthuriums, they like less sun, in my experience, than the philodendrons. So you can see the philodendrons we've got growing here. This has been here for a while and it's just not, it's just not growing. It's not dying, but it's not really growing. It's not thriving. Because it's not. It just doesn't get enough sun. Yeah. But the anthuriums like it down here because. Uh, I really like that one too, darling. They, they, they get the humidity. Well, so what's the name of that one again? This one I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We, we just, I just got this at the garden center a couple of weeks ago. They didn't know the name of it. And this one, I got it at the same garden center and it was basically almost dead. They gave me it for like 500 well, pesos well, or something. Well, I, I just thought that they are the same. They might, they might be, but I think not. You look at the, the, the lobe here, the shape of the lobe is different. You think so? Yeah, you look at the distance between the top of the lobe here mm. and the distance between this one is larger. So I'm pretty sure they're different pretty sure they're different species. I could never tell. Now this is another type of um, calathea. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a baby lutrea almost. Um, and growing under here we've got another regali. So I moved this from the other side of the house. I'm hoping it'll, it'll grow a shoot here because uh, I only moved it a few days ago. You can see its leaf was getting burnt. It was getting a little bit too much sun there. So I moved it around here and uh, hopefully with the humidity a little less sun, it'll be happier. Uh, the regalis can grow really huge. I mean, I we know. saw one at Arid yeah. Narrowitz where the leaf was, was this big. <laughs> so that's kind of one, of one of my aims. You know, some people with their gardens, they just want to collect lots of different species, which I like doing, having the variety, but um, they're quite happy to keep them in pots and just have the collection. Mm. I would rather see them grow to their, you know, Full maturity and size that's one of the reasons why i put them outside put them into the garden yes you're going to get leaf damage yes you're going to get insects and things you're going to get not going to get the perfect leaves that you see on instagram but they will grow to a larger size ideally you have a controlled environment like a greenhouse and uh, you can keep the pests away and they're not going to get hit by the wind and everything and and, and so then you can have the, the best of both full size and perfect leaves in a perfect condition yeah uh so going along here this is some new additions to the garden just a couple of days ago um so oh, i i, oh, uh, this I is the seen that before. alocasia jacqueline and this is an alocasia it begins with it's m cute. i forgot its name but it, it's, it's like a black velvet or it's something. similar to the black velvet but yeah it's it's got um if you touch the leaf it's got like yeah. a like a rough texture to it yeah i forgot its name it begins with m Alocasia. Oh, um, but that one is also something. cute. This here. Yeah, and this will grow large. Um, so this is oh. called a Jacqueline. Alocasia Jacqueline. I've got another one at the front. 
So I brought two of these. And again, these were quite expensive not that long ago, but now quite cheap. Oh, just to let you know, guys, that he basically invited me for a garden too because he added a lot of plants that I haven't seen uh, before. This so year said, is... Babe, I'm going to give you a garden tour today. A, uh, another philodendron. So <clears throat> a tip as to whether the philodendron likes the environment. So look at the size of the leaves. Remember on the ones that were growing well, they started off small and they got bigger. Mm. But these have started off big and have got smaller. It means it's not happy. It means it's not really liking the environment that it's in. So you need to make some a little cuttings bit more sun. and then you move. So that's, yes, exactly. I'll take some cuttings from this once this leaf has hardened off. We'll see, we'll see how the next one goes and then probably we'll cut it, uh, propagate it and move it to another part of the garden where it will, where it will like it more. Um, so this is a cross of... Um, a soderoy and something, I think. Um, it's got that soderoy type, yeah, type, the, type the coloration color. to it. So this is not a species. It's, it's and a the varicoste as well looks like soderoy. Uh, so this living wall was the second one that we did. The anthuriums here are really liking it. So you can see the size of the anthurium leaves that we've got. This is anthurium crystallinum. Um, and it's just got a new leaf just come out. So we've actually got two growing here. One's growing bigger than the other. Um, we've got another uh, vichii here. So this is a little different. So this is a wider form. So the narrow form and wide form vichii. So on the narrow form, the uh, ribbings will be a lot closer together. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the kind of wide form, the space between the ribs is a little larger. I, I like the, the narrow form myself. I think it looks cooler. But uh, anyway, this one's growing quite happily here on the wall. Um, this is a cross, it's a philodendron splendid. It's a cross of a melanocrysum and um, varicosum, I believe. So it's got that kind of varicosum color to the back of the leaf when it first opens. I've got a few of these. We've got a mature one growing at the back. We skipped over it actually, um, but there's a mature one at the back. The leaves will get about this size. Um, so that's still juvenile. We've got lots of begonias growing on here. Really quite happy. Um, there's, I don't know, thousands of different begonia species. Uh, I don't know the name. <laughs> um, different types of begonias. Uh, we've got some more philodendrons here. Another anthurium. So this is a more common type anthurium that you see around people's gardens. So they, again, they refer to this as the flower, but it's not. This is the sex organ. So you can see here, actually, the difference between the male and female ones. color um got a jose bueno now just opened up here so this is uh, the, another queen anthurium so you saw the one at the back that was new just been put on the rear wall when we redid it this one's been here a while so uh, this is the latest leaf just opened up now the thing that amazes me all the time with anthuriums is when the leaves open you know they can open this size and they will get four or five times bigger as they mature over and harden off over a couple of weeks. So this only just unfurled two days ago. That's, so you can imagine this is yeah, going to get right. three to four times bigger than this yeah. over the coming weeks. So obviously this Queen Anthurium here is very happy. And, you know, it doesn't have to have a huge pot. You see what it's growing in. Yeah. You now, again, these are epiphytes. You know, in the wild, this would gr be growing up in the, the nook of a tree somewhere where mm -hmm. two branches... Maybe and an old bird's so it nest. it doesn't need like soil doesn't need or whatever. a lot of soil. Yeah. Uh, just you know. air. So, yeah, maybe in a bird poop, there's a, mm. a seed. It's mm. been pollinated it, and it's in the bird's nest and it will just grow up there <laughs> in the tree. And then, then it will send out its, its roots. So you see the roots are coming out, anchoring itself there. Uh, now, if we go Sorry, and look darling. at the, the Magnificum here, you can really see what oh, it's yeah. doing. So you look the, here. The roots. You see all the roots coming out. You see? So it's anchored itself to the wall there. So this is just what it would do in the wild. It would anchor itself to the tree. And uh, it can just grow as an epiphyte, just getting what it needs from the air. And uh, old leaves that fall off and decompose. Um, so that's that's just how they grow. So uh, this Warraquinum can, can grow quite large leaves and doesn't have to be in a huge pot. It's just quite happy growing in that. In fact, there's very little soil medium even left inside there. 
Um, we have another Monstera growing here, Deliciosa. Um, this here is another Anthurium, so I cut it. The cutting's at the back. This is the baby that came out. That's a Anthurium Forgetii white stripe. So what's unique about this Anthurium is the lobe is actually joined. So you saw the ones that are separated. Then you saw on the Clavinerum where they overlapped. Mm. Well, this one, they're, they're actually see. joined. Oh. There's actually no... Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I no can slot see. There. Oh, my God. So that's one of the ways you can identify the Forgetii type. Yeah. So some are overlapping, some are like attached. Some are, some are separate, some yeah. are overlapping, and these ones are attached. Some are wider and some are... Oh, goodness. And different types of stripes as well. So this, this one basically has one main white vein down the middle and only a couple of ones going to the side. Uh, we've got some Syngoniums growing on here. I think it's called a Syngonium Salmon. Um, more orchids. So this is a Vander orchid. So these like to grow kind of hanging like this compared to the other type, which, which uh, like to be on the tree. Uh, another red Congo down there. Actually, it's two. Um, more Syngoniums. Nothing really super special around here. We've got more uh black velvets and color cages down there putting in some space you got this i don't know what it's called but it's kind of a cute color yeah that's why it's keeping it just keeps self-propagating uh back there the unfortunate about this part of the garden is it really gets hit by the wind uh we have some really windy days here in alvira I, maybe because we're also at the highest point of alvira so we don't um, you know we don't have any other houses providing any any screening from the wind. So we get really strong winds blow along here and they, they just they just shred these leaves. So Pretty. we've taken a cutting from the Dark Lord. It's now at the back, but this has a growth point already. So oh, coming out there. nice. So it's going to push out a new stem. Oh, I'm excited for that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just very unfortunate. It gets some really nice leaves, but they just were getting destroyed here. Uh, variegated um, alocasia, uh, elephant ears. We've got another one of the Alocasia jacqueline's down here. So this area gets a little bit more sun as well. So I think the Alocasias might do better here. We've got the Caladium. Um, I'm not really sure its name, but it has this cool coloration to the leaves. This type of Caladium. And then this is the variegated giant sensation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen that before. So this is a giant I cannot sensation. Believe it. I, I feel like I don't live in this house. <laughs> That's a giant sensation. And you can see that the leaf is a little bleached. See, it's not that dark green color because yeah. it's been very sunny lately. So this, is the, this is the new leaf and you would expect it to be, to be kind of darker and stuff. But anyway, it's, even touching the leaf, it's warm because this area it's... gets so much sun. But as this tree grows, it should provide some more shade. And I took a cutting from the rubber tree. We'll see if it grows. So maybe we can generate some more shade. I here. like this one, guys. I call that the Valentine plant because it this? really looks like a heart, don't you think? <laughs> like a perfect heart. This is, uh, I think, a native species to the Philippines. So if you can see, Nick's plants is really like, they're really Halam super Halamina, healthy. I think it's called. Uh, it's that type of Halamina. So every day he wakes up and he water them, clean, clean them, take away the dry, yeah, dead leaves. Yeah, cut away leaves. the dry, dead leaves. And uh, I tend to throw them, you know, just back into the garden. So I don't use a lot of fertilizer. Sana all dinidiligan lagi. When you cut off the leaves, just throw them. You see them at the back there. The old leaves, we just throw them back there and they just decompose. And, you know, again, that, that's just how it would be in working the, in the wild. In the wild, right? yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're keeping them as a house plant in a pot, then you need to regularly fertilize. But when they're outside growing wild like this, they don't need so much fertilization. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's not super healthy because again, it gets hit by a lot of sun. I'm actually surprised it's lasted as long as it does. Uh, uh, uh. Um, the fern's not, not so, not so happy, but yeah. So these are bird's nest ferns. These will grow, you know, again, like a bird's nest up in the tree. Um, and we planted this yesterday, another rubber tree. So this will grow large and again, provide some shade because as the sun moves that way, it, it provides some shade to that area. You can see these ladyfinger palms or rapids are getting sun bleached. It used to be just a baby. It's not even as tall as that fence there. But yeah, look. It's two years growth, yeah. Yeah, it's two years old. Look at that. Awesome, no? 
Well, because he really takes care of them. All right. Bye, sweetheart. And thank you bye. for all the tips, especially the neem oil. Don't use it at daytime. Neem yeah, oil mm -hmm. should be used at nighttime because it gets destroyed by the UV light. So it will become useless. And what else? Um, make sure to read what kind of medium or soil mix you yeah. can use on different types of plants. You cannot just use whatever, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then experiment with the locations. You know, if you have a plant that isn't doing so well, you know, move it to another location. Yes. Um, and, you know, um, read what type of environment it likes, whether it wants more sun, less sun, more water, less water, high humidity, low humidity, and move them around, you know. You have to try and, or what I'm trying to do anyway, is recreate the natural environment of the plants. And most of these are tropical jungle plants, so they tend to grow underneath trees, so they're not getting full light, and uh, it's humid. Um, and even when it rains in the jungle, actually, you'll see the forest floor doesn't get too wet. Because the rain yes. lands on all of the, yeah. the leaves of the trees. Yeah. And what gets down to the floor isn't as much. So, you know, uh, uh, again, you don't have to water them too much. Um, but lately I've been watering every day because, because of the, it's, really it's been really hot. Freaking hot, yeah. Very hot.